All right. Welcome, welcome, everyone, to Holy City Happy Hour, hosted by Charleston Culinary Tours. I am Charlie. I am Palmer. And welcome. What are we talking about tonight, Palmer? Oh, we've got openings and closings. Uh, we have a fleet blessing. We have some dinners of kinds. We have knives. Uh, <laughs> we have a lot. We've got a lot popping off, actually, this week. A lot going on. Uh, we will jump on into it. Sound good? Let's do it. Yeah, go for it. Start with Lenoir. <laughs> so Lenoir has officially opened. Vivian Howard's uh, much anticipated restaurant, Lenore, has officially opened uh, at the Renaissance Hotel, which is also where you'll find her other uh, Charleston restaurant, Hot and Handy, which is more of a grab and go kind of place, counter service type place, whereas Lenore is very much a, a sit down dining establishment. Patty Melt is going to be one of the central signature dishes, I've heard. Mm, I like the Patty Melt. Looks like a beautiful interior, really unique design, um, very modern. Um, very cool. So, yeah, so check out Lenore um, from our, our newest celebrity chef transplant, Lenore at the Renaissance Hotel. Welcome from North Carolina, uh, Miss Howard. Uh, we have Elise signed Sushi Wa. They did a funny little post, a funny little thing. Uh, where they kind of psyched, psyched the people out a bit on their Instagram, where they said, we signed a lease, swipe to see the new spot, you swipe, oh, it's where they already are. So they're staying in their place. They've been at the, in this little cube um, at workshop up here, Box and Crate. So, you know, you guys know if you've been watching or if you live in Charleston, that workshop will be no more at the end of May, I believe. Uh, but Edmunds Brewing is staying where it is. And in their sort of initial postings about this workshop was very clear to say Sushi was its own thing. We don't know what's gonna happen to them. They might stay where they are. And it appears they have, they're gonna stay where they are. They've signed a longer lease. So they'll be in their spot. Um, um, they're fully reservation only right now. It is a little spot if you've ever been. They do take out trays. Um, they do a wonderful, wonderful omakase. So if you wanna dine in, you can go do that, uh, but they are going to be kind of transitioning into a new branding, but in that same space. So congratulations. I think it's a great space for them. And um, I think it's, it's going to be, I'm excited to see what the new stuff looks like, but they're a great spot for sushi. So I'm glad they're keeping everything else the same. Indeed. So look forward to visiting you in your new slash same spot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's something that happened this past weekend, April 20th. Uh, the annual blessing of the fleet. Uh, this was the Mount Pleasant's blessing of the fleet. So all of the shrimp boats will come in. Uh, in this case, it was uh, underneath the um, uh, Ravenel Bridge, which is the big giant um, bridge that goes from the downtown Charleston to the Mount Pleasant area. And the ships pass underneath it while they're being blessed um, by the, uh, I don't actually know who does it. I'm assuming the, the city's. The Pope, they get the Pope to come, it's crazy. <laughs> I think the Pope was involved with this one, um, but I'm assuming the city's chaplain um, uh, does a blessing as they as they cross them. So all the all the boats are involved, and um, they're they're blessed for the the future shrimp um, having a, a safe and lucrative haul. So um, blessings to the Mount Pleasant fleet. And again, you'll find these all along the coastline. And then the Colorado has a really fun one. Um, so keep an eye out for those uh, if you want to do something of this nature. Um, Mount Pleasant. We'll have to wait till next year. Yeah, still going on. Absolutely. Um, we lost another restaurant recently, and this was an old standby, but I think it was very well loved. Do you know, Charlie, if this was a COVID loss or just the uh, uh, owners retiring? The I think it was well, semi retiring. Um, yeah, the impression I got was that they were just ready to be done. Kind of a um, oh my gosh, I'm already forgetting it. Um, Hominy Grill, kind of a Hominy Grill situation of just. I'm gonna go out on top. Um, yeah. it's a hard yeah. year, so might as well do it now. We got a good offer, and um, gonna go. Uh, we're talking about Fat Hen, by the we way. Are. Yes. <laughs> Fat Hen closed uh, yesterday. Was it yesterday the last time? Yeah, but they're closed on Sundays. So uh, okay, they posted a couple Instagram things with like their whole staff. So maybe they got the whole staff together yesterday and had a thing. 
if you have a gift card and want to buy some beer and wine <laughs> or you have the credit card. So they're like, if you have fat and gift cards laying around and now can't use them, please come get some beer and wine or please come get reimbursed for it, which is very sweet. I'll be here 11 to four till Friday. So if you guys, if anybody has fat head cards laying around, go get that reimbursed or go. Go buy some yeah. wine from them. I'm sure they're trying to get rid of that stuff anyway. So they do have something interesting going in to this space, something that we have known and loved before. And I would, if you had told me that this was going to go into that space, I'd be like, really? Uh, but Monero is going to be going, returning to, to Charleston. Uh, you guys might recall Monero was downtown <clears throat> on East Bay Street, and we lost it. Was it sort of early 2020, I feel like? Um, and there's more than one now. There's one in Atlanta, um, but they are going to be going into the Fat Hen space, which is great for folks that live out that way. Not as great for me. <laughs> yeah, you got a bit of a haul to go. Yeah. yeah. Um, and next up, Quentin Middleton. And again, locals, if you know, you know, Middleton made knives. Quentin Middleton is a, a knife smith. He's an, a knife maker. It's a very talented metal metalist, metallurgist, not metallurgist, Damascus steel chef invitational. And I'm not sure what this entails, the chef invitational. It sort of sounds like they have chefs come in and like use these knives. Um, anyway, he was a featured, uh, blah, 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 featured knife maker. They do this every year. And he was, I think, one of only two black knife makers that were featured in the Invitational this year. Um, and he got number three for best pairing knife. His knives are freaking gorgeous. Um, they are very expensive, as you guys probably know, like well-made knives are. He does this beautiful like carbon steel and the, the intricately kind of folded steel that has this really, really amazing pattern. So congratulations to you, Quentin Middleton. Congrats. Um, and he always is replenishing these. So if you're interested in grabbing one of his knives, keep an eye on this or follow his Instagram. So come sometimes as he posts when he's put some new knives up, what he's got going on in the shop. But we, we are very proud of you having third place best, best pairing knife in the Damn Steel Chef Invitational Online 2021. Good job. Uh, we got a little update, a um, story that uh, Paul was talking about about a month ago. Mm. Um, yeah. Haven Cafe, they're looking to open up. Um, some business partners are looking to rehabilitate this abandoned building. It's been abandoned for about 30 years now. Um, they're looking to rehabilitate it into a garden shop and neighborhood cafe. Uh, they're hoping to, um, you know, really contribute to the neighborhood as part of this walkable business. It's had to go up for rezoning because it is strictly rezoned for residential. Um, so they're looking for a new zoning permit for that. Um, and it was a four-hour hearing. Uh, lawyers were brought for both sides. Um, this is back on April 20th. Uh, eventually, uh, it was a three-to-one vote to table it, <laughs> to defer the issue uh, for the sides to continue to talk to each other. Uh, it sounds like the only pushback is from the people immediately adjacent to the property. Um, yeah, I mean, we're a living city. It's, it's, I think it's a boon to have different, you know, mixed use stuff, thing, a variety of things in a neighborhood, not just, not just fancy houses. Agreed. It would be, yeah, if you're in the neighborhood, you know about this, speak to, speak to some folks, um, uh, speak up at the next meeting they have, and I'm sure we'll be alerted there. That was Harkin Cafe and Bakery, Bakery or Harbinger, same owners that are, would be doing this project. Uh, so follow them and, and keep abreast of what's going on with this. Um, in a, a, a sad update, uh, Joe Cunningham, and what, I know he was a, a, a many years veteran of the F&B scene. Um, Charlie, what, what all did he have his fingers in, his hands in? Sure. So I do want to clarify because this both caused both Cameron and I to do double takes, um, particularly because this name has been in the headlines already. So Joe Cunningham, not our former Rep House representative uh, here in the Low Country, um, who just this week announced his governorship. Different yeah. local Joe Cunningham. Um, he died on April 15th. So, yeah, he was a 30 year food and bev um, vet. Um, mainly, he was known for just being just an incredible um, uh, person to have on your team when you're opening a restaurant. So, uh, mm -hmm. he, uh, the Jim and Nick's that used to be on King Street, which I frequented. Quite often when I uh, worked just yeah. a 
was down, uh, we would always get cheese biscuits uh, delivered to the store. Um, so uh, he helped to open up that space. Uh, he helped him to open up Rodney Scott's. Um, and then most recently, and where he had been working, um, Big Bad Breakfast on Meeting Street, uh, an Atlanta group that honestly, there was a little pushback from the neighborhood about this space coming in, particularly because it wasn't like directly local. It was an Atlanta company. Um, yeah. But everything that I've heard, the neighborhood immediately embraced it because of Joe Cunningham, Cunningham's efforts to be a part of the neighborhood um, and uh, wow. by name and you know, greet them every day. And, and he, yeah, he was he was really one of those uh, forces in the industry that um, changed the way that people saw um, saw it. So um, condolences to his family, uh, to his uh, both um, biological uh, restaurant families. Um, it, uh, certainly a, a heavy loss for them. Absolutely. Our condolences, absolutely. So that is what happened in the past. Moving on to what's happening right now. Very exciting. Uh, again, I feel like almost every week we have something to say about KJ Kearney, Chef Kearney, mm -hmm. and Black Food Fridays and what he's going on. He's really, really grown that brand so much. Should we tell him? Yeah, I guess we can tell him. Y'all got to hop on your favorite podcast player and subscribe to the Fix Your Plate podcast. We'll be discussing anything and everything, food, beverage, culture, history, and more. Great. Yes, so new podcast, very exciting. Newest thing KJ Kearney's got mixed up in um, with Anella Malik. Uh, Anella is an influencer, foodie, based in, I believe, D.C. Um, so I'm excited to see him have yet another new thing that he's working on. So just something else, if you're a big podcast listener like myself, please check this out. Uh, again, Fix Your Plate uh, with K Chef KJ Kearney. Congrats, KJ. Congrats on the podcast. We're always excited to see stuff you're up to. Absolutely. My one complaint about his feed is that like, I'll see just this incredible plate of food. And it's in like... Oh, Yeah. <laughs> like no, I need to. I need this in Charleston now. Like I get so excited to see these dishes and then realize that they're so far away from me. <laughs> in Philly or somewhere else. Absolutely, I do the same thing. I'm like, maybe that's here. No, he's tricky like that. Uh, or London. <laughs> I think he's getting like London spot. Oh yeah. Right. Um, International. <laughs> It's a good good bucket list uh, source to go to. <laughs> Food he does, if you guys check his Instagram, he does at the top of his thing have the highlights that focus on each individual city. So you can go to his Instagram and click on Charleston and see the Black Food Friday stuff. It's just here or any city. Uh, he does a really good job of maintaining all those highlights, keep him up to date. So don't be like us and get fooled. Just go to his highlights and pick the city you want to look for. Because he does. He's got people sending him stuff from all over the world. We have navigated away from the Chasing Sage Sushi Saturday, have we? We have. We have. So Chasing Sage, uh, one of the uh, new darlings of the restaurant, uh, Charleston restaurant scene. Uh, they had a very popular Sushi Saturday. Uh, where That was one time a week. They would do sushi. Um, and then because of it, season they are now doing softy saturdays future things charlie future things future things what's going to happen more with our frothy beard frothy beard i feel like always has something going on yes they really do They're yeah so they actually did this as sort of a two-part post which i thought was pretty cute they did a the journey began so this is um this their little mascot guy here finn is his name blasting off from their home base in west ashley uh, to build a new colony off-world, land in the second Frothy Beard location, be established, and they were, you know, kind of this was their setup to announce it. So it's going to be in Somerville, and they're calling it Frothy Beard off-world, which I think is real cute, and it's going to be, uh, the tap room and kitchen is going to be in what is currently a homegrown brew house in Somerville. Um, Frothy Beard is going to take it over, and that's going to be a second Frothy Beard location. We've seen a lot of uh, places and people attracted to Somerville. I think Somerville is really growing in a big way right now. Um, so congratulations for all the beard. I think this is great for you guys. We, we you know, we, we love what y'all do. So we're excited and happy to see you grow. Congrats. Yeah. And sorry if you mentioned this um, and I just missed it. But yeah, so their off-world location in Somerville is going to be where all their space-themed stuff is. Oh, no, I didn't mention that. That's great. That makes a lot of sense. 
Very, very cool. Very cool, Frothy Beard. Congrats. Indeed. Um, so a couple of events coming up that you might want to take place, um, take a part in. Um, so Middleton Place, uh, which is one of the plantations um, that's open to the public around Charleston, mainly known for their um, historic gardens. Um, they have the oldest um, formal gardens in the United States, I think trimmed hedges and English style. So if that's what you're looking for. That's what Middleton's all about. Um, but they, uh, they're they doing a, a garden strolls and wine tastings uh, starting tonight. Um, every Wednesday night, 5.30 to 7.30 until May 26th. Tonight's the very first one. Uh, 20 to $30. Um, and each Wednesday, they're going to choose a different part of the grounds to pair wines with and walk around in. So you can go multiple times and you'll see all sorts. Of, of the of the garden program. so lovely oh nice and uh now it's time to be walking around outside uh, with a glass in hand um, a more healing kitchen you got a couple little dinners here to, to knock yeah, out yeah. so a more healing kitchen is uh, an organization what they're mainly focused on is providing healthy nutritious meals for folks who are um uh, healing or who are ill who are going through an illness um and typically they engage uh teenage peers to um um, to prepare these meals so a lot of good culinary experience for them plus volunteering experience so just kind of a cool it, all the ins and outs of what they do is really neat so they're doing their seed to soul brunch in the park um all very um, um health conscious food so vegan charcuterie board um pesto pasta salad low quat tart um mm -hmm. Season right now. If you're walking around Charleston, you see these big green trees with these like orange fruits on them. Those are little plots. Um, you can't if it's not in a private yard, <laughs> they're just in the city. You can pick those and eat them. They're bright orange. Um, so those, those are edible. And are you see them more and more? And something I've noticed this year, which is cool. Um, anyway, so this is um, Saturday, May 8th. Um, and you'd pick it up. So it's a $50 donation, um, but you pick it up at the restaurant. Oh, very cool. And one more. We got a harvest dinner. Very interesting. So Green Heart Project is another organization we've talked about a lot. Uh, they are an urban farming um, nonprofit. Uh, they uh, they have a couple of spots around town. Um, their most recent one, and I think biggest project, is the William Enston Home, which is located at 900 King Street. Um, big, beautiful garden, beautiful design. Um, and um, a lot of, uh, they're very much um, uh, farm to school. Um, so they're all about um, getting kids into the gardens and then also providing the school system with fresh local veggies. Um, so anyway, they're having their 11th annual harvest dinner on Thursday, May 13th from 6 to 8. Um, you can just do to go uh, orders and then drive through and pick them up. Um, but uh, it'll also be a barbecue dinner with sides, uh, sides from the garden. Uh, there will be a farmer's market you can shop at. Um, you can also do self-guided tours of the garden while you're there as well. So, um, yeah, so that was all two awesome organizations and two amazing meals um, if you're looking to support both of them and also get some good food along the way. Very cool. I love it. A lot of nice dinners coming up. Very cool to see. Uh, something else coming up. Uh, if you are a fan of dumplings, maybe you've heard of Sarah's Dumps. Um, Sarah and her husband run this business making Korean mandu, Korean dumplings. Um, and through the pandemic, they've been mostly doing stoop drops, so deliveries. And then you can find frozen bags of these dumplings at uh, like the veggie bin, a couple places around town. And I think it was the Charleston Beer Works. You can order them. Their buffalo ones. So they've announced they're very excited they're actually going to be popping up again. They were doing this pre pandemic and they've decided they're going to start doing it again. So if you're interested, these are great dumplings. Her, uh, uh, the mandu are great and the buffalo are my favorite because I love anything buffalo. Uh, but it looks like each month through September, she's got one pop up. I imagine there will be more to come perhaps entirely possible. Uh, but if you like dumplings, if you like Korean mandu, if you haven't tried Sarah's Dumps, they're great. And she's, you know, a small business, woman owned business, highly recommend. Um, so track her down at one of these spots. She and her husband seem real sweet, highly recommend. And then we have a move uh, from a local distillery. This is Cannon Distillery. 
they announced this not too long ago, and they also just announced they are having their moving day. So they were previously on Savannah Highway, and they said goodbye, Savannah Highway, across the moving to James Island. Um, so this uh, James, uh, the Savannah Highway location is closed. You can still find their stuff at local liquor stores. So close to you, Charlie. Yeah, do you know where James Island? Because I hadn't heard this yet. Um, I want to say, I thought somebody, oh yeah, uh, Folly Road. That was not very specific, but somewhere on Folly Road. That's basically, oh, all of James Island, you mean. <laughs> anywhere on the island. So no, I don't know specifically, but excited for them. Um, you know, it's nice to see along with our big brewery boom, they were having some uh, distilleries pop up and do well enough to move into bigger spaces. So congrats. Cannon Distillery, we'll see you on Folly Road, wherever on Folly Road it is that you end. Um, that make, could be lots of places. And then just a general sort of thing, because uh, I was talking to a friend about this the other day, Mother's Day is coming up. Uh, if you are planning on taking your mother out somewhere in Charleston, you want to go ahead and get on that. A friend of mine has her mom coming into town from DC and she said, I've already been looking and tons of places are already booked up for Mother's Day. So if there's somewhere you've had your eye on, go ahead and get on it. I mean, I think this is typical. I think every year Mother's Day stuff books up pretty quick, but I think in particular this year, since people are you know, newly vaccinated and excited to get out and eat out, I think there's extra, extra uh, more people fighting for those Mother's Day spots than ever. So we'll next week we'll talk about Mother's Day stuff going on. But if you're just looking for somewhere to go have like a brunch or something, go ahead and go ahead and make that res because they're already filling up. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's um, nationwide. It's like the busiest restaurant day of the year, if I'm remembering my statistics correctly. If not, it's like the top three. So anyway, so yeah, it's busy. It's busy. So make plans now. If you have a so um, I have two things to close this out, my two virtual foodalities. If you're watching us do this food thing, you're probably interested enough in food that you know about Anthony Bourdain um, and that he passed away rather untimely. Um, so when, when he passed away, he was apparently about to start working on a new book. Um, that book has come out recently. So his longtime assistant, Laurie Wooliver, um, ended up writing this kind of in his stead and sort of with his notes, she had a sit down conversation with him that was supposed to be one of like many sit down conversations about his favorite places, all the places that he'd been. Um, there's a New York Times article that kind of goes into the nitty gritty of this a little bit more that I would encourage you guys to read, especially if you're an Anthony Bourdain fan. It's really, really moving. It's really, really sweet. Um, and she's like, you know, we, we're going to have many more of these sit down conversations and these interviews about the places that he'd been. And of course, we only got this one. And so I, you know, attempted to write this book based on this one. <clears throat> and she talks about how Anthony like wasn't a guy that really liked travel guides. He was more into atmospherics. He liked fiction. He liked books that gave you like a sense of a place, but didn't tell you like definitely go here, definitely go here. So it's sort of not quite like a travel guide. It's just you know, like places that he was passionate about. And she apparently did her, her due diligence um, checking up on like if these places that she's, that are written about in these books, if these places are still open, if they're still good, if there's still places you would visit. Um, and she talks a little bit about too in this article, which again, I would definitely recommend you guys read, especially if you're an Anthony Bourdain fan, um, that, you know, if you get this book, which I plan to, um, that, it, you know, Tony seemed very much like a avoid the tourist, stay off the beaten path, don't go places that people know about. But at certain sections of this book, like Tokyo, she talks about, you'll see, you know, like he loved the robot restaurant. He loved the golden guy famous bar district. He loves certain things that people, you know, like you'll find in like TripAdvisor things of Tokyo. And she says, you know, he did, he wasn't about like being cool for cool sake or like obscurity for obscurity's sake. So like if he found something that he loved, even if it was something that like everybody loves and everybody writes and talks about, then he would still want to write and talk about it. And the whole point of me bringing this up is they're doing a talk. Um, they're going to do a Zoom interview kind of with uh, Lori, who again uh, wrote this book. 
Um, but this is going to be coming up on the 29th, and it'll be an interview with um, Helen. I forget Helen's last name, but I follow her on Twitter, and she's great, and a writer for The New Yorker, food writer for The New Yorker, and Laurie Wolliver. Um, and they're just going to have a conversation about this book. Um, you can get, for $15, you can get a ticket to the Zoom. If you just want to attend the talk, for, I think, $40, you can get a signed by Wolliver copy of the book in addition to your ticket that will be shipped to you and I like was like I don't need the book I just want to watch the interview and then I read that New York Times article and I was like I want the book now so give it a look again if you're a Tony Bourdain fan um definitely at least tune into this this talk because I think it's going to be really cool and then the last one I just thought this was interesting this just popped up in my internet world this morning uh, Epicurious um, announced I believe today that they're no longer, yesterday, they're no longer going to be publishing recipes, including beef. They actually, and if you're like, wow, if you get mad about it, they haven't written about beef in over a year now. So this is like, they've done the sneaky thing where they're like, we haven't, we're stopping doing this. Oh, we already stopped doing it. You didn't miss it, so calm down. Um, and they have a really great, you know, explanation here. You know, they're like, we, we would like there to be a planet. You know, we know this greenhouse gas emissions beef being sort of the biggest problem among those. Um, and they're excited. They're like, you know, for every restaurant, every recipe we didn't post that was a burger, we got to post one about cauliflower mushrooms, different stuff, different ingredients. We hadn't explored that much before and we've gotten a really great response to that. Um, and they said, you know, they chose to announce it now because beef consumption um, has been down from where it was 30 years ago, but it's been slowly creeping back up the past few years. Um, so, you know, they're like, we wanted to be louder ourselves as sort of a, a biggish voice in the food community about this choice we've made. And, you know, that we, we want to make a, a better choice for our planet. And hope that you guys will too. So read this article, you know, whether you agree with this or not, I, read their argument here because I think it's it's very well made. Um, but I, I think this is a really interesting development. And as somebody who doesn't cook with me much at all, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm sad I didn't notice because I look at Epicurious, but I'm excited that I can uh, find more recipes there that are, that, that I don't have to be like, maybe this will work with tofu. I can, I can just uh, cook as is. Anyway. That's virtual foodality, and that's all we got, Charlie. That's all we got. That's all we got. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. Um, thank you for joining me tonight. Again, we are Charleston Culinary Tours. So these two sponsors, Holy City Happy Hour. Um, we are a food tour company. All of our products and tours and experiences are food or drink related here in the low country. So we have walking tours, we've got seated experiences. Um, so if you want to check out a couple restaurants, check out our culinary tours. If you want to just get a lot of history and not move a whole lot and a lot of good food, check out our uh, historic supper club in our historic century style dining room. Um, anyway, tours.com can also find us on social media to be updated about all the fun, cool stuff going on around town. Where, how, where do they find our social media? At Charleston Culinary Tours um, on Instagram, and that's our Facebook thing too. We've had a really fun time, I think, pivoting away from just focusing on tours for the Instagram and to just like what's interesting food stuff going on around town. So definitely follow us at Charleston Culinary Tours um, if you want some cool dining intel, fresh and new. Anyway, I think that's all I've got. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's all we've got. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you guys next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Um, and keep uh, an eye on social media. We'll remind you there too. Bye. Bye. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining us for yet another Holy City Happy Hour with uh, Charleston Culinary Tours. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please hit the like down below. If you really loved it and you want to catch them all, all of these, hit subscribe. Maybe that's over here. Maybe it's down here. I don't know. It's somewhere. Um, hit the little bell so that you are reminded, notified when we upload new episodes of this to YouTube. Um, and leave a comment, interact downtown if there's something you'd like to see us do, you have thoughts and feelings on anything we mentioned this week, um, perhaps a new segment you would like to see us attempt. What do you think about virtual foodality? I don't know. Leave a comment um, and we'll catch you next week. Bye.